Howdy trippers. Well, today we are headed back into the Texas Hill Country to spend some time in the falls. But it's not just water that falls here. There's history, artwork, pie, and uh, oh yeah, marbles. Ah! Marble Falls! This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. The Hill Country Hideaway of Marble Falls sits about one hour northwest of Austin and an hour and a half north of San Antonio. Today, Marble Falls is a classy little burg of culture, but its history goes way back to the cowboy days. In fact, it was a local country boy who composed the music for well-known cowboy tunes like this song. If you tie yo get along a little doggies, it's your misfortune and none of But that's own. the happy cowboy stuff. The Wild West around here also had its darker parts, including one very dark hole down a very dark path. Okay, the path's not so dark, but it is very gravelly. Welcome to Dead Man's Hole. This is a natural limestone cave that's over 150 feet deep. But back during the Civil War, it was used as the dumping ground for the bodies of Union sympathizers. And at various other times when someone needed to get rid of something, if you know what I mean. So as you see, it's been covered now for safety reasons. But legend holds that as many as 17 bodies were dumped down into this tomb. Which is weird because only five have ever been pulled out. Ooh. Oh, cool. Hello! Hello! Oh, sweet. Dead Man's Hole echoes. No, it doesn't. And I'm not dead. Huh? I've been here for quite some time. Is the war over yet? The Civil War? I'm getting very tired of eating daddy long legs. Oh, that sounds disgusting. We could bring you some pie. Oh, yes. Bless you. Bless you. Okay, very good. We'll be right back. And, uh, uh lemon meringue, please. Uh, sure. Lemon meringue. Oh, yeah. And, and all, all I'm out. And a spoon, not a fork. Okay, now you're just getting picky, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll bring you some pie. We'll be right back. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we better just get away from the uh, not dead yet man's hole and fast forward to modern marble. So this is Marble Falls Main Street. And amongst the historic building, you'll start to notice there's some artwork. But if you keep looking, there's not just some artwork, there's lots of artwork. Yes, on practically every corner of the historic district is a piece of someone's artistic inspiration. Ranging from the, uh, I'm not really sure, to ones that are a bit more accessible even to the artistically challenged, like me. Ah, yes, now this one I understand. I mean, haven't we all felt like a chimpanzee on a skateboard at one point in our life? Cuts right to the soul, really. You see, art doesn't have to be stuffy. Anyone can do it, and the folks out here do it, a lot. So this gallery is really neat because it contains the works of about 50 artists that are members of the Highland Arts Guild all local from the surrounding counties. I like this one. Of course, I always like boots. Amateurs and even professionals abound in this part of Texas, including some who are very well known. Hey, now this one's really neat. But the coolest part about it is that it was made by a local artist whose gallery and foundry is actually right outside of town. What do you think, you up for a visit? Let's go. That's right. One of the most famous artists in this part of Texas is based right outside of town at the Dan Pogue Gallery and Foundry. Okay, so this is Mr. Dan Pogue, one of the most talented artists in Texas. So, how long have you been doing this? Well, it seems like forever, but 50, about 50 years. Oh, amazing. How do, you, how do you get started in this sort of thing? Well, I was always interested in art. Probably was started in my, as a teenager. In my 20s, I met a sculptor. I just enjoyed that much better working with my hands. That's incredible. I mean, the most, the, the only sculptures I ever made have been out of Play-Doh. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, nothing is as substantial or lasting as bronze. While the final piece is bronze, 
That's only one small step, and this foundry is the best place to learn about the entire process. And here is where we start. Cool. Here's an example here of a uh, head of Christ, and uh, this was the clay original. Oh, that's amazing. So you form this with hand and tools? It's all and carved by hand. Uh huh. Next step from that would be, here's what we did. We made a rubber mold off of it. It's a silicone. This one we've actually brushed on, but oh. we use this to pour the wax into. It's what they call the lost wax process. These same steps apply, even on the grandest scale. This horse is amazing. We installed that a few years ago. It weighed uh, 2,500 pounds. It was about 15 feet high. <laughs> How many man hours went into creating that? It was a two year project. Wow. So this ain't exactly a quick process. Next comes the ceramic mold. The wax is melted out, then comes the fire. This furnace here, with the crucible in here, and the bronze ingots in it, and that's where we melt the bronze down. Okay. It's uh, usually poured about 2,000 degrees. Ooh. So it has to be very efficient, very quick, and very safe. <laughs> Fire, melted metal, and fast. What ah. could go wrong with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is our workshop and all that process that I've showed you so far. This is what leads up to a finished piece. And this was the original clay here that for that piece and then the rubber mold. Well, this is really awesome. I see, uh, you know, Christ in a lot of your sculptures, so I, I imagine you pull a lot of your inspiration from your faith. Yes, that's true. Uh -huh. I, I've done uh, a lot of religious pieces for different churches, uh, and it's, it's been real rewarding. I've been blessed. Well, you obviously have an incredible gift, and that came from somewhere, so you're, you know, putting it back into wonderful pieces like this. That's fantastic. Dan's a sculptor whose legacy is forever cast in bronze, an art that will live on for generations. Man, I wonder what I could leave as my lasting legacy, a way to stay here in Texas forever. Uh, 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 bad idea, bad idea. I think we should eat now, or at least drink. I gotta wash this taste out of my mouth and image from my brain. So it's back to downtown to eat at one of its favorite local establishments, our bar and grill. Serving up tasty, homemade, home smoked, home down delicious cooking on Marble Falls' most famous hill. And this is its owner, Ray. This is our bar and grill. We've been open since 2005. We make all our food fresh from scratch. Our queso, pico de gallo, salsa, green chili. We smoke all our meats in-house. When you say smoked meat, you're talking my love language right yes. there. So I think I might have to have something with that. So is this sort of like a American meets Mexican meets Southwestern kind of thing? A ranch style Texas food with a Mexican flair. Oh, I like it, I like it. <laughs> the food is really awesome. It's, yeah. it's really family oriented when it comes to the food too, so it's not a just a throw in the oven thing, they actually make it. Good. Is this the sort of place where everybody knows your name? Yes, it is. It's kind of like the old Cheers sitcom. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, except it's our bar. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's like a second home. Really? Is my wife around here? <laughs> no, okay, no. <laughs> to say these folks are friendly just wouldn't do it justice. But there are a couple other aces that this place has. One is being connected to the Uptown Theater. Renovated, glorious, and full of live music. Another is this hill. And then I know this is a very important street a few times a year. Yes, Soapbox Derby Weekend. Yeah. <laughs> they um, start up top of the hill and they race all the way down. People here cheer and hoot and holler. Are you ever behind the wheel? I did it one time and I'll never do it again. <laughs> it, was, awesome. it was scary. <laughs> it happens every June. Homemade soapbox cars racing down this hill as fast as their wheels can handle. Now that would be a rush, almost as much as their food. All right, so when I learned they smoked their own fajita meat and pork, I knew that's what I was getting. The question was, what was I gonna get it on? And so I decided to get it in a taco bowl. But it's on an herb garlic shell. You got their house smoked fajita meat, homemade pico de gallo, and then a chipotle sauce all over it. All right, maybe I should eat it like a taco. Nah, I think I'll use a fork. I mean, look at these big chunks of smoked fajita meat. You know, most people just throw it right there on the grill, but when you smoke it, you get not just the Mexican fajita flavors, but all that delicious smoky barbecue type of flavors too. They could probably put that on top of anything and it would be delicious. 
And you know, we don't get a chance to eat many salads here on the day tripper, so this is a welcome change up right here. And the good thing about a taco bowl this huge, you can actually just kind of break it up and turn it into nachos as well. Now that is good stuff. Oh, and remember what I said about them being friendly? Well, they're friendly enough to let me crash one of their soapbox cars. Well, I hope not. Da, 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 da. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Just halfway today, but half is plenty for me, uh, at least for today. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Now there are some that see the hill country as a place of calming and serene beauty. But then there are others that just want to crush it. Off-road style. And for those types, there's a place here called Hidden Falls Adventure Park. With the veritable armada of four-wheelers and dirt bikes, it's a great place to kick up some dirt. And this is park manager Brian Resselwig. Here's us to give you an idea of how large our oh, property man. is. We have wow. uh, three different trail systems, each designed specifically for whatever you're riding. So if you're on a Jeep, that trail is designed for a Jeep. We want to be professional. We don't want to be just some fly-by-night operation. We want to do it right and help people enjoy the outdoors the way we do. Which is always most enjoyable alive. So the whole crew is here to help you feel safe and comfortable with both the gear, the area, and your machine. The hills and dirt, on the other hand, well, they couldn't care less about comfort. They're out here to challenge you and make you earn every tiny inch. Yeah, some of these ups and downs have what they call pucker power. And I'm not talking about your lips. Everything combined, there are 2,700 acres of playground and 200 miles of trails. That is way more than just a ride around some track. This is a full-on chart your own adventure. Intense minutes of some hardcore climbing, we're at the back fence and what can only be described as one of the best views in Texas. What I like so much about this is that you cannot check out at any moment. I mean, you got to be engaged right on the whole time because you got to read every rock. Yep. You're 100% on the bike, on the machine, on the four wheeler. It's you, nature, and the good Lord, and y'all are just cruising, cruising around as mild or as wild as you want. Yeah, as wild as I want today, I think it's still pretty mild compared to these guys. But as Brian said, what's hard today will be easy tomorrow, which gives me hundreds more reasons to come back. But sadly, it's time to head to the house. Woo! Brian, Lance, dude, thank you guys so much. You're welcome. Hands You're down, welcome. one of the coolest things I've ever done in Texas. Good. Now, as fun as that was, kicking dust into all of my crevices, I could seriously use a bath about now. Luckily, there's one giant oversized tub right in the heart of town. Time to go paddle down and hit the water. It's a small stand-up paddleboard rental shop with just the kind of quick and wet adventure I need. And this is its owner, Erica. Have you been paddleboarding before? You know, I have paddleboarded before, but never on Lake Marble Falls, so I'm pumped about this. Okay, great. So it's pretty common here. This is just the canal, and then it heads out to the lake. If you just head around that beachy cove, just about a 10 minute paddle out there. Just yonder, perfect. Mm -hmm. You start on your knees and then you're gonna stand up and then you just go for it. Stand up paddle boarding only caught on a few years ago, but it's quickly becoming one of the hottest sports in Texas because, well, Texas is hot and water sports like this are mandatory. You know, I must say, this is pretty cool. I know a lot of people use stuffing as a workout, but I prefer to use it as a chill out. I think I might just take a nap. No naps allowed on day trips. Besides, there's rough waters ahead. So now we're getting to the part where this little canal opens up. It might get a little bit windy and a little bit wavy, but hey, I'm on a surfboard. 
So we're out here on Lake Marble Falls and you may be wondering where are the Marble Falls? Well, I'm glad you asked because they're actually right below us. You see, when this lake was dammed up, it covered the namesake Marble Falls in town. They used to be the big landmark in the area, but now this town has another landmark, a much tastier landmark, which I think it's about time we should go check out. After all, it's happy hour. A quick dunk, a quick dry off, and here we are. So if you've been to Marble Falls, chances are you've been to the Blue Bonnet Cafe. But don't worry, we're not here for second lunch, but to partake in one of the happiest hours in all of Texas. Yes, high happy hour. And the only buzz you'll catch in this place is the sound of the mixer piling that meringue higher and higher. All right, so this is Dave Plant with Blue Bonnet Cafe. So the people here look happy. It's happy hour. So tell me a little bit about how this works. It's three to five every Monday through Friday. We've got 15 flavors, summer meringue, summer cream. We have the old favorites like the pecan, the apple, the cherry, but also chocolate cream, coconut cream, top seller. And people love them all too. There's not one I can think of that sits on the shelf. They all fly. They I do. bet, they I do. bet. If I had room in my stomach for 15 pieces of pie, I would get one of each. <laughs> I tell you, that's, that's the truth. How many pies do y'all make now on a big day? On a, on a good Saturday, we'll do 250, 300. Last year, Thanksgiving week, we did 2,000. No way. For the week. It's pretty amazing to watch them go out of here on that day because as quick as the bakers are putting them in, there's people standing here just waiting to catch them. <laughs> Not really much different today. This place is packed. Time to get happy. It is happy hour, right? So uh, better belly up to the bar. Here's the pie selections. We've got apple, cherry, pecan, fudge, peanut butter, and then, yes, banana cream. Banana cream pie and a glass Ooh. of cold milk. Ooh. Ooh, I love banana cream pie. It's as if a slice of pie and a banana pudding got together and had a baby. And man, is that baby delicious. Man, can you do it the old fashioned way in an old fashioned diner like the Blue Bonnet Cafe? My friends, this might be the happiest happy hour of my life. Oh, now that is good. Oh, wait, but I need some pie to go. Lemon meringue, a la mode, spoon on a fork. Now we've done some pretty adventurous things so far, but next up is something that's gonna take us even higher than these meringues. As we head to nearby Granite Shoals to meet up with the guys in the skies of Fly, Texas. This is Jeff and this is Danny. They're experts in light sport aircraft. And whether that's on a trike plane, a traditional ultralight, or the kind with absolutely no engine. All right, so Danny, I'm about to put my life in your hands, so at least tell me a little bit about what's going on here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, we're excited to have you out. Here we have a Falcon 225 tandem glider. We have some custom fiberglass skids so we can come down and land safely on the water. And we should get to a couple thousand feet today over the lake. I've done a lot of cool things behind boats out here on the lake, but never anything quite like this. Now, while this may seem risky, there's so much science and safety involved that all there is for me to do is relax and enjoy the ride. Like a baby in a cradle. Since there are no foot launches in Central Texas, we must rely upon this boat, airspeed, and this very small cable to take us up to altitude. Here we go. That boat keeps getting farther away. Yeah, just start to work its way away from us. And we just keep them right in front of us as we go up. Yeah. You know, I have never hugged a man I just met more closely, but I am so glad Danny's controlling this. So you can see LBJ is a really neat area to fly. It's kind of a meandering lake. A lot of nice houses, lots to look at. It's kind of fun sometimes. You can see fish down there that people can't see in the boat. <laughs> uh, yeah. Talk about a way to see LBJ. Yeah. As we glide, Danny is constantly reading the winds, the clouds, and this glider. No small variation goes unnoticed. So as I'm going up, I try not to have too much input so that I can feel what the glider is telling me. So you can see once you're up high, it's all about finding the next thermal. These clouds, see these clouds over here have fairly flat bottoms with yeah. kind of that nice cauliflower top. So cumulus clouds like that are one of the best signs of where thermals are forming where they are or where they've been. With the power of these thermal uplifts, Danny can stay in the sky for hours. So what's our altitude now? Almost two grand, I think. <laughs> All right, so he's turning around now. 
There's a way for him to get underneath us a little bit. And that means it's time. Here it goes. Woo! Uh, and there we All are. Right. Now we're on our own. Goodbye. We're flying. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Out here getting it done. <laughs> so we move our body weight to the left to turn left. So try a little left turn. There you go. Whoa! There you go, and you gotta roll us back straight. So you, you're not pulling and pushing on the bar. Not really pulling you're... and pushing. I'm just put, the, we're just holding on to the bar to push our body Bodies around in the around. control frame. So if you want to do some performance flying real quick, we could try to do that. So we got to look for thermal to get back up, or we can yeah. just go. Oh! 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 Woo! Better than any roller coaster. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, since we're not on a cross-country trip, it's time to land. But out here, I should probably say it's time to water. You only get one chance. Woo! Nice and smooth. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that was a sensation unlike anything I've ever felt. On top of it being just an incredible adrenaline rush, it's incredibly beautiful too. Woo! That was fun. Well, guys, I'm not sure this day trip could get any better. Wait. Yes, it can. Because right back in town is Double Horn Brewing Company, and it's time for dinner. This is a local craft brew pub with incredible beer that's only rivaled by its incredible food. All right, so this is Dusty Knight with Double Horn Brewing Company. Hey, thanks for having us out. Tell me, where's the name come from? So Double Horn was actually a town in Texas that was, uh, it's a crow flies, you know, about, about 10 miles that way. The town was formed in 1855, was around until the mid-1900s, and uh, we wanted to bring it back to life right here. There must have been very thirsty people in that town then, huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about them, but I'm always thirsty. So. <laughs> there we go. So tell me a little bit about your beer. So we tend to uh, maybe hop our beers a little bit more than most. I got no problem with that. A little bit of a personal preference, and uh, we have a number of IPAs that we continually rotate throughout the year, as well as wheat beer and an amber beer that we uh, tend to keep on on a regular basis. Good craft beer made the traditional way it should be. But Double Horn Brewing is breaking into some pretty untraditional territory. Watermelon size sun? So the longer you let it warm up, the more watermelon you actually get out of the taste. The perfect beer for a hot summer day right there. That's what we figured. That's quite delicious. I know it's not just about the beer, but also the food. So what kind of food do you guys have? Right. Yes, we've won the uh, the best burger in the whole country for three years in a row. So we've got to, a great selection of burgers and steak. I'm just a big fan of freshly brewed beer and freshly prepared food. And if Dusty is a fan of good food and good beer, his fans are just as much. What do you think of Double Horn? I had a lot of great tastings here, and the food is wonderful. So I'm a frequent <laughs> customer Good here, beer, so good food, yeah, what's not yeah. to love? The community has been needing something like this. We obviously all like really good beer, and we like good food. Oh, it's great. It's just a place in Marble Falls that there's nothing like it. You know, it's something you can be proud of, you know, local fresh beer from Marble Falls. I couldn't have said it better myself. All right, so Double Horn is known for their burger, but when I looked on the menu and saw the bison burger, that's what I had to get. It's bison patty, smoked bacon on top, you got a warm blue cheese sauce, and then, look at that, some of the house Double Horn Brewing buffalo sauce. Buffalo sauce on a buffalo burger, duh. All right, how many layers of goodness are in this thing? Oh yeah. That is a very, very solid, solid burger right there. The, the bun is sort of cheesy and soft. It's got this gooey, blue cheese, warm sauce all over it. Bison is actually a much leaner meat than beef. But when you cook it right, and then you put it on a burger like this, ooh, man. What a day. More than just hill country, Marble Falls is water country, sky country, art country, and adventure country making it just about perfect day trip country. I got about uh, half of this burger left to take down, so I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye con Dios, amigos. Now this one's really cool. It's two zebras facing each other in a loving embrace. They have stripes like zebras do, and no bodies, which is how I like my zebras. As you see, it's been covered now for safety reasons, but uh, uh, 
So this gallery is really cool because it contains the Kazakhur. <laughs> uh, so I see that you got the mix. Oh, very good. Yeah. There right. we go. Okay. Five, six, seven. Okay, sir, we uh, we have your pie here. Okay, yes. Oh, oh yeah. that, did I make? I can't see anything down there. Perfect. Keep throwing Keep it going. down. Okay, here's some more meringue. Ooh, yeah, the meringue train coming down. Beep, beep. Some of these pieces are gonna have some dirt on them a little bit, but that's okay. Maybe some rocks and leaves. How is it? It's it's glorious, it truly is. Howdy y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy y'all, Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, Condias, amigas.